Now you will read about the Staphylococcus. We have seen that the gram-positive cocci are classified into uh, two families that is the Micrococcaci family and the Streptococci family. In the Micrococcaci family, we have two genera, one in the Micrococcus, other one in the Staphylococcus. Micrococcus, we have seen that uh, it is Micrococcus is a non-pathogenic organism and is a normal commensals on the human body, while the Staphylococcus is a pathogenic organism and is arranged in a clusters, while the Micrococcus, Micrococcus is arranged in a uh, tetrads. Okay, so now we'll see the Staphylococcus. So among the Staphylococcus, the most pathogenic species is our staph aureus that is the staphylococcus aureus how do we classify the staphylococcus so for classifying the staphylococcus we have the coagulase test okay for classifying the staphylococcus we have coagulase test so if the coagulase test is positive then uh, uh, the staphylococcus is the staphylococcus aureus if it is positive then the group of staphylococci which gives negative coagulase test they are called as the cones that is coagulase negative staphylococci and they are rarely pathogenic the examples of cones are the staphylococcus epidermidis staphylococcus lugdinensis staphylococcus hemolyticus and staphylococcus saprophyticus so that is the examples of the Cons, so we have seen the classification of the staphylococci based on the coagulase test. If the coagulase test is positive, there is one staphylococci which is giving coagulase positive that is staph aureus and if the coagulase is negative, the group of staphylococci which give negative coagulase test, they are called as, as a group they are called as coagulase negative staphylococci that is cons, they are rarely pathogenic and these are the examples of the cons. Now if you come to the, so our main focus is on the Staphylococcus aureus. So we will focus on the Staphylococcus aureus for the time being. And uh, so further, if if we see uh, in the Staphylococcus aureus, then the virulence of the Staphylococcus aureus is very important. So the virulence of the Staphylococcus aureus can be classified into the cell wall factors, the toxins released by that Staphylococcus aureus and the extraocular, extracellular enzymes. So the cell wall factors which are contributing in the virulence of the Staphylococcus aureus is its a thick cell wall there which is made of the peptidoglycan. So virulence means uh, how much um, uh, you know how much uh, bacteria is pathogenic to the host that is called as a virulence factor. So if the if the bacteria has a very thick cell wall that means the uh, the host will not be able to resist it to that extent and the bacteria will easily invade into the host that means it will be having more virulence so that's why the thick uh, thick cell wall of the staphylococcus aureus provides the uh, provides the virulence to the staphylococcus aureus other than the thick cell wall we have the clumping factor we have uh, which is also called as bound coagulase or the cell surface adhesin okay so these uh, clumping factors or the bound coagulase they are they they act as a virulence factor because they bind to the collagen and as they are in the host body there is collagen so when they bind to the collagen that will help the bacteria to invade the host so it's also a that's why it is also a virulence factor to the virulence factor of the bacteria and this clumping factor or the bound coagulase is the uh, is the basis of the slide coagulase test we, which we will see separately on the co uh, separately uh, when we will be looking at the coagulase test so the slide coagulase test is based on the clumping factor or the bound coagulase other than uh, other than this we have protein a in the cell wall so protein a is also in the cell wall how is it acting as a comp acting as a virulence factor so protein a is a anti complementary protein we know that the complementary proteins are a uh, part of the immunological uh, resistance to the organisms so anti complementary means they resist to the this protein a helps in resistance of the bacteria to the complementary proteins which are the part of the immunological system of the host so as they are anti complementary protein they will inhibit the opsonization and thereby help in the uh, uh, invasion of the host 
by the bacteria that's why their protein A is also acting as a virulence factor now uh, one mcq is very commonly asked uh, related to protein a that uh, this is the protein a is the factor which is responsible for the co-agglutination reaction because this protein a binds to the fc portion of the igg antibody okay Th uh, this is a very common mcq which is being asked that is protein a is the responsible factor for the coagulation co-agglutination reaction so this is all about the cell wall factors which is peptidoglycan that is thick cell wall then clumping factor or the bound coagulus and the protein a now coming to the uh, toxins which are uh, released from the staphylococcus aureus and which act as the virulence factors of the staphylococcus aureus so among the toxins the uh, first and the most important is the hemolysins alpha beta gamma and the delta these hemolysins by the name we can appreciate that they uh, they will be causing hemolysis because the name says itself hemolysis okay so that's why they are they cause hemolysis and uh, uh, um, little things about the different hemolysis which are important from exam point of view or mcq point of view are so about alpha hemolysis uh, the alpha hemolysis have a very peculiar feature as they are active at more than 100 degrees centigrade and at less than 70 degrees centigrade okay so uh, in between the 70 to 100 degrees centigrade the alpha hemolysin becomes inactive and it has a special property to lyse the sip rbc so this is a uh, important property of the alpha hemolysin if you talk about the beta hemolysin so beta hemolysin is that hemolysin which is associated or concerned with the hot cold phenomenon okay with the hot cold phenomenon and and this beta hemolysin is also called as sphingomyelinase as as it causes destruction of the sphingomyelin in the cell membrane okay so that's why it is also called as the sphingomyelinase and the important point about the gamma and delta is that they lyse sheep and human rbcs so these are the important points uh, about the different hemolysins of the staphylococcus aureus the other toxin which is released by the staphylococcus aureus is the leukocyanin or the penton valentine toxin penton valentine toxin so uh, the gamma hemolysin and the uh, this so one thing uh, one thing which should be remembered is that the leukocyte leukocidin or the pv toxin they never act singly okay they will be acting only when only when the gamma hemolysin is acting together with it so gamma hemolysin plus uh, panton valentine toxin or leukocidin they act synergistically separately pv toxin cannot uh, act okay so as they act synergistically that's why together they are called as the synergio hymenotropic toxin okay that is the synerg uh, that is the name given when they are acting synergistically and as they are acting synergistically what do they do so they cause lysis of the leukocytes and the rbcs they cause lysis of the leukocytes and the rbcs so which hemolysin is acting with the penton valentine toxin it is gamma hemolysin which is acting along with the penton valentine toxin other than that we have the epidermolytic or the exfoliative toxin which is causing the staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome that is called as 4 s s s s s okay so epidermolytic or the exfoliative toxin is causing this staphylococcus scalded skin syndrome and the very important sign that we see in this staphylococcus scalded syndrome and the nikolsky sign okay it is the nikolsky sign which is nothing but the exfoliation of the epidermis so in this uh, staphylococcus st scalded skin syndrome we see the exfoliation of the epidermis and that exfoliation is called as a nikolsky sign so it may be asked uh, in the mcq that exfoliative sign or the nikolsky sign is seen due to which toxin so it is epidermolytic or the exfoliative toxin other than 
these three toxins we have fourth toxin also that is called as the enterotoxin so there are 15 serotypes of the enterotoxins and all of them are the super antigens okay all of them are super antigen the most important of them is the type a and type f type a is associated with the food poisoning while type f which is also called as the toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 type f is also called as the toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 which is causing the toxic shock syndrome so the two most important enterotoxins are the type a and type f which are causing the food poisoning and the toxic shock syndrome respectively this is all about the toxins uh, which are acting as the um, virulence factor of the staphylococcus aureus now we come to the extracellular enzymes which act as the virulence factor for the bacteria so the first of that uh, extracellular enzymes is the coagulase enzyme so coagulase enzyme the function of the coagulase enzyme is that it activates the prothrombin so as the prothrombin will be activated it will be converted to thrombin that thrombin converts the fibrinose into fibrin and when the fibrin is formed there is clotting of blood what how does that clotting of blood help in the invasion so when the fibrin clot is formed around the bacteria it protects the bacteria from phagocytosis okay so the bacteria remains there for a longer duration of time and thereby the virulence of the bacteria increases so that's why coagulase is a virulence factor for the staphylococcus aureus other than the coagulase we have some other enzymes also like the dna is hyaluronidase which acts on the hyaluronic acid which uh, which is a very important component of this uh, of the connective tissue matrix okay and phospholipase which uh, breaks down the phospholipids present into the cell membranes of the different cells and the fibrinolysins these are also causing lysis of the fibrin so these are some of the uh, extracellular enzymes which uh, help to increase the uh, virulence of the staphylococcus aureus so whenever the virulence factors of the staphylococcus aureus is asked you have to classify them into the cell wall factors toxins and the extracellular enzymes and then answers uh, and then answer uh, pointing to different headings like this in each part okay so you have to write in the headings that will fetch you better marks now this is all about the um, virulence factors of the staphylococcus now we'll be moving to the different infections which is caused by the staphylococcus aureus so the different infections which are caused by the staphylococcus aureus these are the we can remember by soft pens okay we can remember these names which uh, names of the infections which are caused by this staphylococcus aureus by a mnemonic called soft veins as for soft tissue infections as for soft tissue infections like folliculitis impetigo cellulitis these type of infections are very commonly caused by the staphylococcus aureus other than that the osteomyelitis is a very common uh, staphylococcus aureus is a most common organism of course to cause the osteomyelitis okay then food poisoning okay food poisoning uh, we have learned that the type a enterotoxin which is associated with the food poison most commonly and so uh, it is also causing food poisoning and it it generally causes uh, early food poisoning which appears uh, in less than six hours after taking or eating the food okay so early food poisoning is caused by the staphylococcus aureus then we have the toxic shock syndrome by t toxic shock syndrome that is caused by the type f enterotoxin which is nothing but the toxic shock syndrome toxin 1 okay then pneumonia pneumonia what type of pneumonia does it cause so it causes ventilator associated pneumonia then a for acute endocarditis acute endocarditis very common organism to cause the acute endocarditis that is the uh, you know uh, the inflammation of the endocardium of the heart like the like uh, the valves and the endocardium of the heart is in uh, infected with the is infected with the bacteria so uh, that is by a then i means infective arthritis it can cause necrotizing fasciitis it can cause that is the uh, infection on the skin um, then as for uh, the scattered skin staphylococcal scattered skin syndrome and sepsis can also be caused by this 
Staphylococcus aureus. So these are all the infections which can be caused by Staphylococcus aureus. And remembering this much is enough for Staphylococcus for the infections of the Staphylococcus aureus. Now coming to the lab diagnosis, uh, if there is any infection which is uh, supposed to be caused by or which is suspected to be caused by the Staphylococcus aureus, then how will we uh, go for the laboratory diagnosis of that uh, infection? So, so uh, in any lab diagnosis, we have to first collect the specimen. So here also we'll first collect the specimen. So a specimen is collected based on the lien. We have seen that it can cause different types of liens. Okay, the Staphylococcus causes different types of liens, which we have removed by the mnemonic of soft pens. So it can cause different types of lien, and based on that lien, we will collect the specimen. Like if there is soft tissue infection, if there is cellulitis, folliculitis, then we will collect the pus and the wound swab. If it is causing acute endocarditis, then we will collect blood in the automated blood culture bottles. If it is causing food poisoning, then we will collect the vomitus, feces and the contaminated food. Okay, so based on the infection, we will collect the different types of specimen. Next, we, what we do is the direct smear microscopy. Is the direct smear microscopy. So with the collected pus, wound swab, uh, uh, we prepare a smear on a glass slide. We stain the glass slide, and uh, if there is Staphylococcus aureus, we will be seeing gram positive cocci in clusters. Okay, so whenever you write the gram positive cocci or gram negative cocci, um, you should must mention the arrangement of the uh, bacteria. So, if in case if we talking about the Staphylococcus aureus, then it is a gram positive cocci, and how is how does it uh, arranged? So, it is arranged in the cluster form. Okay, so whenever you write the um, gram positivity of a bacteria, you must mention the arrangement of the bacteria as well. That is a conventional thing you should remember and write. So, gram positive cocci arranged in clusters. Next. So, uh, by the arrangement and by the uh, gram staining property, we can uh, we can just get a clue about the bacteria. But we cannot confirm that it is Staphylococcus aureus. For that, we have to do the culture. And when we, when we do the culture, then we have to further do the biochemical examination and all to confirm that it is Staphylococcus aureus. So, how do we culture this uh, bacteria? For that, the specimen is inoculated on different media. We will see the different media what we use for the culturing of Staph aureus. So, we inoculate the specimen on different media like pus, wound swab. These are inoculated on the different media and we incubate at 37 degrees centigrade. That is the human body temperature for 24 hours. Okay. So, coming to the different media. So, different media that we use are the nutrient agar blood agar mcconkey agar and the, some selective medias are also there so uh, the nutrient agar in the nutrient agar in the nutrient agar we see uh, if the staphylococcus grows in the nutrient agar we will we will be seeing the golden yellow pigmented colonies remember the whole term golden yellow pigmented colonies will be seen if the staph aureus grows on the nutrient agar why is this golden yellow pigmented colonies produced there this is due to production of the non-diffusible staphylozanthin pigment this is nothing but the beta carotene okay so due to this pigment there is generation of the golden yellow pigmented colonies in the blood agar it produces narrow zone of beta hemolysis narrow zone of beta hemolysis in the maconky agar small pink colored colonies are produced why because it ferments lactose okay so uh, as it ferments lactose in the mcconkey agar whenever lactose is fermented when whichever bacteria ferments the lactose it will produce pink colonies okay so staph aureus also ferments the lactose that's why it also produces the small pink colonies so uh, other than these three medias nutrient agar blood agar and the mcconkey agar some selective medias are also used like the mannitol salt agar salt milk agar and the ludlum's media this may be asked as a mcq that which of the following is a selective media so it is selective media for staph aureus so it is ludlum's media which is the selective media for staph aureus after the culturing on different uh, media we have to 
produce the culture smear and we have to stain it with the gram stain so culture smear for the culture smearing we uh, produce a smear on a glass slide and we'll stain it with the gram stain and then we do the microscopy so uh, what does that microscopy reveal so if it is a staph aureus then the microscopy will reveal the gram positive cocci which are arranged in clusters because staph aureus is arranged in clusters next how do we confirm so for confirmation we have to go for the biochemical tests okay for confirmation we have to go for the biochemical test so uh, biochemical tests first we will do the catalyst whenever we get the gram positive bacteria we first do the catalyst test if it is positive then it is uh, stiff, uh, then it is micro uh, then it belongs to the micrococci family to which the staphylococcus also belongs so uh, and if uh, it is if the catalyst test is negative then it will indicate the streptococcus family but here the uh, in the staph aureus the catalyst test will be positive if it ne if it comes out to be negative then it will indicate the streptococcus if it is positive then it is indicating towards the staph aureus or staphylococcus then we will do the coagulase test because we have seen that the uh, staphylococci uh, among the staphylococci uh, only staphylococcus aureus is the bacteria which comes out to be which comes out to be coagulase positive and is pathogenic while all other are coagulase negative and are non-pathogenic they are called as cones so that's why for uh, identifying the staph aureus we have to do the coagulase test as well so coagulase test is done we will see the coagulase test in a separate video because coagulase test is sometimes asked as a short notes or short answer question in the university exam so we will we'll have to see the coagulase test separately in a separate video but here we will see the overview of the coagulase test to write in the lab diagnosis so the coagulase test is done uh, in two ways that is the slide coagulase test and the tube coagulase test so first we'll see the slide coagulase test in the slide coagulase test if it comes out to be positive if it comes out to be positive then it may be a staph aureus or a staph lugdinensis because a staph lugdinensis although it is a cones a coagulase negative staphylococcus but it may give positive slide coagulase test it may give positive slide coagulase test so so if it is coming out to be positive then it may be staph aureus or a staph lugdinensis then we have to uh, and if it is coming out to be negative uh, then we have to do the tube coagulase test because tube coagulase test is confirmatory okay and uh, also we have to differentiate between staph aureus and the staph lugdinensis then also we have to do the tube coagulase because although staph lugdinensis gives positive slide coagulase test positive slide coagulase test but it does not give positive tube coagulase test so for confirmation of the staph aureus we have to do the tube, tube coagulase test okay so in tube coagulase test uh, which is done after slide coagulase test so in tube coagulase test if it is come if it is coming out to be positive then we can say that it is staph aureus we can surely say that it is staph aureus and if it is coming out to be negative then it is cones coagulase negative staph aureus so uh, what we have concluded from this uh, whole flowchart is that uh, tube coagulase test is the confirmatory to distinguish S aureus from cones why is this so why is this so this may be asked as a explain why so why is tube coagulase test is the confirmatory coagulase test because the two most important reasons for this are that more than 50 percent strains of the staph aureus are uh, uh, give slight uh, coagulase test negative okay more than 50 percent strains of those staph aureus gives negative slight coagulase test okay so and the second reason is that the staph lugdinensis which is uh, originally a cones but it gives positive slight coagulase test so because of these two reasons we have to do the tube coagulase test which is confirmatory next what we do is the automated system where uh, so in the automated system what do we do uh, we use the mallet of and vitec 
and they automatically tells we need not to do any uh, biochemical test in the automated systems they these machines called, named malit of enviatic they themselves give the results of the bacteria what bacteria is uh, in the specimen next we do the antimicrobial susceptibility testing for the giving proper antibiotics and proper treatment to the patient now uh, in viva sometimes some uh, tough questions are asked like the coagulase test staph species that means what are the staph uh, staph staphylococcus species which give positive coagulase test till now we have read that staph aureus is the only uh, uh staph uh, i mean staphylococcus which gives the positive coagulase test but there are some other staphylococcus also which give positive coagulase test but they are since not uh, significant clinically that's why we do not read them so some of those examples uh, those staphylococcus which give the positive coagulase test these are staphylococcus intermediates staphylococcus hycus and staphylococcus aureus we all know so these are the three uh, staphylococci which give positive coagulase test this may be asked in viva you can remember these names so this is all about the staphylococcus aureus next we will see the uh, the some small topics like mrsa and the coagulase test